What's up my YouTube family, Sergeant Greybeard with the Gaming Brigade back with another Division 2 video and as all of you know by now it is week 3 of the holiday event which means we have the next global event starting reanimated therefore today I wanted to take some time and give you some tips to hopefully help you get started. Now if you happen to be new here first of all welcome secondly feel free to hit that subscribe or join button we would love for you to be a part of our gaming family and if you enjoyed this or found it helpful at all do me a favor my friends hit that like button it really does help us out so as I start the video off I want to remind you of two things first of all this video is really geared for new and returning players maybe you haven't played reanimated before you didn't have the desire and secondly this video is geared around farming for XP there are so many different ways to earn stars in the game however today we're going to work on the XP farming method now just like every other global event, there are different ways you can earn stars and that's going to be your currency to buy caches which can get you really really good items in the game. Now you can see here you have your typical reward track which does give you caches and we'll go over a detail on that in a moment. However, in my opinion, the best way to get some really good rewards in this game is to earn stars and buy caches. Now, you can earn stars in multiple ways. You can see here, you have daily challenges that, you know, go on for the first four days. And for new and returning players, just so you know, let's say on day one you miss a few of those challenges, you can always go back and complete them at the later date. Just follow the prompts at the bottom of the screen and we'll let you know exactly what to do. You could also see in that previous page, that is where you activate the event. And remember my friends, you are not going to earn any stars, any caches, anything whatsoever unless the event is activated. I've heard from players who were playing for an hour or so forgot to activate it. So again, make sure that's the first thing you do. And as we move on, one thing I'd like to remind new and returning players of is we're just coming off the Golden Bullet event, and during that event, your character is incredibly powerful. So while reanimated is, it may not be as much fun as the last one, however, it is still a really great time to earn a lot of good gear in the game. So another question I'm getting at the channel is a lot of people are wondering, is it better to buy named caches or legacy caches if you're looking for Dark Zone exclusive items? And my friends, it's all luck of the draw. I mean, it, 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 there's no one that's better than the other. My opinion is try both and hopefully you get what you're looking for. I mean, you can see here with this first legacy cache I opened, I got the named rifle, the Harmony, which by the way, I was just talking to someone about. I hope you finally get it, my friend. And in the second one, there were no named items whatsoever. So again, sometimes you're going to get it, sometimes you're not. Next, my friends, I want to talk about farming in the game when it comes to choosing your difficulty. And I want to give you a quick example because in my opinion, it's all about being extremely efficient with your time and getting through the content as quickly as possible. Now obviously, as most of you know, the higher the difficulty in this game and the more directives you have active equals more XP. That's across the board without a doubt. However, there are a lot of people out there who maybe struggle on heroic difficulty, so doing something may take them longer than it would on challenging. So a quick example I can give, and you will hear me say this multiple times in the video, but drop the difficulty and add a few directives. So right now we're on heroic difficulty at a control point, and by clearing it, you're going to get about 297,000 XP once it's done. And the reason I say about, it's going to be more than that because you have to take into consideration all the enemies that you kill, you're getting XP for them as well. So here what we'll do is we'll change it to challenging, add a few directives, and you'll see the difference in the XP you'll actually earn. You can see now by dropping the difficulty, adding a few directives, we're now getting 330,000 XP as a base amount for clearing the same control point. Now keep in mind, the loot you receive will not be as high of a quality if you were doing this on Heroic, but remember, during this event, it's all about farming XP as fast as possible, so that's our main goal. With all that being said, my friends, I now want to show you one of my favorite ways to farm for XP during the reanimated global event. And to be honest with you, it's the same way that I've shown you in, you know, Golden Bullet and what was the other one before that shade exposed, and that's hitting up territory controls over and over again. And once again, I want to remind you as we get into the gameplay, this is for new and returning players, solo players. Look, if you're someone who can get through a heroic mission with five directives in under six minutes, this is not the video for you. Again, this is for people who are just starting off. With that being said, I want to go over a few details about hitting up territory controls. First of all, they are all across the map. You want to find one that you're familiar with and you learn the timing of the NPC. Because with this event, again, as soon as you take out an NPC, there's a chance they will pop back up. 
Now, because of this event, and I usually run with this shotgun anyway, I'm using a shotgun because you can see the difference between with that headshot, you saw that huge cloud of smoke. You saw the other NPC just went down. Once he comes back up, you shoot him again. Then he's down for good. But again, you can take out these NPCs with a headshot and they will not reanimate. And as you can see, it's very clear when it actually happens. The other thing is that the cloud that they, you know, when they explode, it's actually a healing cloud. It also gives you some sort of a bonus as well. So again, it will not do your character any damage. It is something you can run through no problem whatsoever. Now, the main reason I recommend going to a territory control that you know is once again, you can get through this in under two minutes as long as you know the timing of the NPC. Keep aware of any that you did not take out the first time with the headshot. You can can see here I well I got to take this guy out boom there's a headshot there pick up a key and then I'm good to go now from the moment I got to this area and started interacting with the NPC it took me about 90 seconds to clear the thing now I am doing this on challenging with three directives you may be able to do it on a higher difficulty you may want one directive two zero it doesn't really matter but I wanted to give you a baseline and as you can see here in those 90 seconds I was able to earn over 200,000 XP and I know the screen says 194,000 XP, but you know, when you take out the NPCs, you're obviously getting XP for that as well. And one question I want to address as a lot of you ask is you only get XP for killing the NPC once. If they go down, then come back up. You are not getting double XP for that. Moving on to another territory control I like hitting up. This one is located in the East Mall. And the reason why I'm highlighting these two, or there may be a third one as well, is strictly because it's in a small confined space. So if you do miss that initial headshot, you don't have to worry about being flanked by too many angles and you should be able to get through it pretty quick. This, my friends, once again goes back to the importance of having certain areas in the game that you're proficient at, that you can farm at pretty quickly, because it will really help you earn those stars. And again, the more stars you have, the more caches you can buy, and hopefully you'll finally find some gear that you've been looking for for a long time. There happen to be a few other reasons why I strongly recommend doing this. And that's because, you know, uh, we've already talked about the time management thing. You can get through it pretty quick. But what's great about these territory controls is when you reset your control points, these should pop up in the exact same spot on the map. So that way you can hit them up over and over again. And for players who maybe, let's say you don't have a long time to play, you want to be really efficient with your time, this is a great way to earn that XP really fast. Now I want to do a comparison with missions as well, because I know for a lot of people out there, obviously you're going to get more XP when you run missions, but you want to think how long does that mission actually take? So to give you a quick example, like I said, when I do these three territory controls on challenging with three directives, I'm getting about 200,000 XP on each attempt, which means in about five, six minutes of time, I'm earning over 600,000 XP. And compare that to running a heroic mission, you know, let's say if you can get through it fast, let's see if you can get through it in eight minutes, maybe 10 minutes, whatever it is. And I know people can get through it faster. I usually get through, let's say, you know, Lincoln Memorial in about eight minutes. If I compare the time in which it takes to have me do, you know, three territory controls and one heroic mission, these three territory controls, I'm getting done in probably close to half the time and getting just as much XP as I would on that heroic mission. And as we move on, I want to remind Mind you, the sole purpose of this is an XP farm. It is not about the quality of loot you're getting when you're doing this. Because obviously, you know, you want to farm on heroic more than challenging because you're going to get better loot. But when it comes to farming XP, if you can get more XP on a lower difficulty in a shorter amount of time, that's what you want to do. There also happen to be so many different ways you can earn XP in the open world in this game. You know, you can do control points, which again, if you can get through in under five minutes, that is a way to go. You also have elite patrols like this. It's going to give you more XP as well once you clear them. However, these are on a timer. So again, I think it's about every 30 minutes, but these are another great way to really earn XP really fast. As I start to wrap this video up, the most important thing is finding a farming method that really, you know, suits your gameplay. I mean, some people love the territory controls because they're in that stationary location. They don't move. Other people love the elite patrols. They may bounce around the map, but again, you're getting more XP when you do those as well. So again, whatever you choose to do, just make sure you enjoy it. 
On that note, my friends, I'm going to start to wrap this thing up. However, as always, I want to thank you all for your incredible support. We cracked 22,000 subscribers yesterday. It's insane. I appreciate all of you. And remember, if you have any questions or comments or feedback, please let me know in the comment section down below. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this thing, if you happen to be new here, feel free to hit that subscribe or join button. If you enjoyed this, do me a favor, hit that like button as well. But most importantly, take care of yourselves, be kind to each other, and we will talk to you soon. Thanks again, everyone.